the Tube and Hat Clan fam. I got an awesome lesson this week. We are checking out Rome's Hurry Home featuring one of my favorite artists, B-Dad Doobie and j -Som. So this is a super awesome lesson. I'm super excited to show it to you. It's not all that hard. We got a couple little awesome parts here. So let's zoom in on the fretboard and break it right on down. All right, so before we get into this, let me talk about little tone settings here. I'm running through a Nux AC50 um, and I have a little bit of reverb on. So I just get a nice little kind of jangly sound, real beautiful. Uh, I kind of want to give the backstory about how I came across this song. So when researching a song lesson to do for this week, uh, I really, really enjoyed Beat at Doobie. So I was looking through her stuff and seeing if she had any new music released. And then I came across this track, and it was actually released as of today's date. Uh, the music video came out for it yesterday, which would be June 23rd. Uh, so I'm super excited to share this for you guys. So let's break this on down. So we need to actually have a capo on the fifth fret in order to play this song. Um, there's not all that many chords to it, so let's talk about that, but just have your capo on the 5th fret. We're going to have a C major chord. And this position is really an F chord, uh, but is the shape of the C major. And re everything relative to the capo, nothing on the thickest string, we'd have 3, 2, open, 1, open. And now we're going to have a F major 7 chord. Really in this position it is a B flat major 7, but again, don't worry about that, we'll just call everything relative to the capo. So this fingering is going to be 1, nothing on the 5th string, 2, 2, 1, and then open. It's like an A minor chord basically with your first finger up on top. So it's a major 7 chord shape. Now this is super super cool because basically what we're going to do is we're going to circulate between the C chord and this major 7th shape. It's going to sound like this. Basically what I'm doing here is you can tell that I'm bringing out the bass line. That's really kind of the fundamental part of the song. So what I'm doing here is I'm strumming down on the bass note and doing a down up. So on the C chord I'm going bass, down, up. And then when I go to the major chord shape, I'm going bass, down, bass, off. So here would be the bass line just without the actual chord part. sound like that if you isolate it. So now here's it all together. So bass chord, bass chord, bass, bass chord, bass chord, bass. So that's what I really like. Yeah, this like low chromatic line. That's going to take care of all of your cool, cool verses. Now, there is this little, uh, these little harmonics that end up happening later down in the song. We'll talk about that in a minute here. But anyway, that's going to take care of all your verses. So just that C to that major 7 chord shape. So really an F chord to a B flat uh, major 7 chord. Now let's talk about the verses here when we get up to the chorus part. So that'll also take care of your pre-chorus as well. So now when we actually have our verses, we're going to have an F chord. So finger-wise, we'd have 1, 3, 3, 2, 1, 1. A uh, E major chord. And that's going to be open, 2, 2, 1, open, open. A G chord. And then an A minor chord. Now notice that when I'm actually playing this, I'm not really worried too much about the high parts of the strings. When I listened to the original recording, I couldn't hear too much of the uh, higher activity in the chord. It's mostly just kind of like on the lower registers. So when you're strumming through this, you don't necessarily have to think about hitting all the strings because I'm not hearing the high notes on these. So anyway, that's going to look like this. So check this out, let me play it all together. So these are all your verses. Chorus.
are these harmonics that are kind of happening uh, towards the, the second verse of the song and after the first chorus you have kind of like all this built up uh, energy into the song. So check this out. What I'm doing up here is I'm actually going up and it's just really, really subtle. So it's super, super cool. So I'm actually all the way up here on the 17th fret. And what I'm doing here is I'm going between the high E and the G. So if you've never played a harmonic before, basically what it is is you're actually going to go above the actual fret wire. Uh, so most of the time when you do this, you're not actually on and in between the space of the fret. You're actually in the actual line. Like here's, here's a rake of all the natural harmonic. That's what you call like a harmonic rake scrape. Anyway, so the technique at hand here is you're going directly above that fret wire and you're plucking it. You're not actually pushing that string down so that you can get that bell-like tone. And this is, uh, again, towards the second end of the song here, and I just hear this really vaguely. And it's just really subtle, but really I'm just going on the E string on the 17th fret and then the G string on the 17th fret. And you can kind of hear that back and forth. On top of the fact that they have... Uh, there's kind of like some of these roll things that are going on where you have like a... And then over the B flat major 7 chord. I don't know, it's just cool to add in these, to add a nice kind of ambience kind of effect. But anyway, so yeah, again, that's the entire song. It's so a C to F major 7, F, E, G, A minor. Alright y'all, that was the lesson. I hope you really liked it. Let me know what you'd like to see next, and if this is the first time you ever come across my channel, definitely consider subscribing and checking out all the other playlists with all the other Beat at Doobie songs, and all the Claro songs, and all the great lessons that are on the channel. I want to personally welcome you to the Hackland fam. Take care, and I'll see you all in the next video.